Good morning and thanks for waking up with us. Today's episode is all about heart. February is American Heart Month. This morning we are sitting down with members of our heart care team and also our community to talk about heart disease, its prevalence, and what it means to you and your family. Heart disease. Let's talk a little bit about exactly what that means. Can you kind of take us through um, defining what heart disease really is? Sure, it can be a little confusing. Heart, heart disease is sometimes called cardiovascular disease. And it's really just a collection of, of different conditions that we all are commonly um, diagnosed with. Um, things like high blood pressure, uh, coronary artery disease, uh, arrhythmias, heart failure. All of those things are types of heart disease. The prevalence of heart disease. Uh, talk a little bit about the numbers um, kind of throughout the country and then if you have any local um, information that you can share with our viewers. Sure, yeah, the numbers are unfortunately sort of staggering. Um, heart disease affects one in three Americans. Uh, it's the number one killer of men and women in America. Uh, and more folks die from heart disease every year than all cancers combined. So we know it's a big problem and it has been for a long time. Uh, here in Shelby County, um, we suffer from a lot of the same uh, troubles that, that many of our neighboring counties do. Uh, Ohio ranks higher than national averages for deaths from heart disease. Uh, and Shelby County is, is even higher in some of those than the rest of the state. So we certainly have, have a problem here with heart disease in Shelby County. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, signs and symptoms, because I think a lot of people maybe sitting at home um, might think that they are, um, you know, struggling or have a heart condition or heart disease, but they really don't know. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of those sure signs and symptoms and what people need to do? Sure. Uh, most people, when you think of heart disease, think of coronary artery disease, which is the condition that causes heart attacks. And when we think about heart attacks, we think about chest pain and, and jaw pain and uh, heaviness in your chest or chest pressure. And those are the things we see on TV and that we always associate with heart disease. Uh, but there are a lot of other things that uh, people need to be looking for. So just knowing your numbers, understanding what your blood pressure is and, and if that's being maintained, knowing what your cholesterol is. All of those things affect heart disease and your chances for survival. Uh, family history, also another uh, big indicator uh, for heart disease. If you know that your, your parents, your brothers and sisters have heart disease, there's a good chance you will too. So understanding that not all symptoms are going to be outward symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about blood pressure as being the silent killer because a lot of times you don't know you have high blood pressure unless you're checking it regularly. Great, and, and you mentioned knowing your numbers, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. What's the first step? How can people know their numbers? Um, do they need to talk to their doctor? Um, what if they don't have a regular doctor? How can they go about knowing their numbers? There are a lot of different ways to uh, participate in, in knowing your numbers, uh, especially during uh, the month of February. There are a lot of free screening events that you can participate in, uh, but really the best way is to have a, a primary care physician a family practice uh, physician or provider that you can see regularly so that you can track and monitor those numbers and know what they are annually or even more frequently if you need to. You know, I think the, the fact that we're even sitting here having a conversation about heart health and raising that awareness is, is key. Um, talk a little bit about the, the preventative and educational components of heart health and what that means. So heart health is, is really a, a personal responsibility. Each person needs to be accountable to, to know what your numbers are and to know what your risks are and, and to do something about it. Um, so many times we hear about folks who have you know, multiple encounters in their lives uh, and they don't change their lifestyles and their behaviors. And at Wilson, we're here to support folks as they go through that transition. Uh, we're here through education, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Heart disease can affect people at any age. Uh, a lot of times we we like to think that it only affects us as we age and if we're, we're older, and that's not true. Uh, one in seven deaths in America is from coronary artery disease, uh, and two-thirds uh, of those folks had coronary artery disease before they were 40 years old. Uh, those are powerful statistics. We, we need to understand our, our own accountability uh, for our health and start at a young age, uh, knowing your numbers and doing the right things to stay healthy. You know, something I wanted to talk about, um, being a female, um, I guess I'm going to kind of give a, a plug to all of the women out there when it comes to their heart health. You know, you talk about knowing your numbers and, and the signs and symptoms. 
Um, and there are a lot of universal signs and symptoms, but let's talk a little bit about women in heart health um, and the difference in those signs and symptoms when it comes to women. Yeah, things can uh, be very different for folks with different uh, backgrounds. Even diabetic individuals will have very different symptoms of heart disease. Uh, so women, diabetics, men, uh, they may see a whole different uh, set of symptoms when they're uh, experiencing uh, heart disease or, or heart attacks even. So uh, you hear and, and see the Hollywood clutch your chest, uh, and that's not always typical, especially for women. Women can have more uh, discrete symptoms like jaw pain or pain in the shoulder blade area, um, tooth pain. Uh, it can be very different for women. Just an overwhelming feeling of anxiety can be very common as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different things your body is telling you, um, and whether you're uh, male, female, diabetic, you just need to know your body. You need to listen to your heart and, and hear what it's saying because it's trying to tell you to, to help yourself. I had a heart episode where um, I started feeling some chest pain at work. Um, got a hold of my cardiologist, went in, he ran some tests, EKG. Uh, we stepped right up to a heart cath. Uh, realized I had three major blockages, one being the widow maker at 98%. Uh, we had to do an open heart. Uh, did the triple bypass at that time. Eight years later, uh, November 2018, 50 years old, went in for a routine stress test. Um, stress test showed some abnormalities and uh, they went in, did another heart cath and I had a right coronary artery was 98% blocked again, so um, we went in and put a stent in at that time. Shortly after that, I started going to Wilson Health, uh, the cardio rehab, and this is where I met up with Emily there, and, and she's got the ball rolling for me with the uh, therapy there, and so. Wow, well, first and foremost, we're so glad that you're here to be able to, to tell your story. Um, you know, obviously, you know, two, two serious episodes that have happened in your life um, regarding your heart. Um, can you talk a little bit about the changes that you've made, lifestyle, um, not only for yourself, but for your family? Sure. I've learned that to um, just kind of slow down and enjoy life a lot more. Um, don't need to work all those hours all the time, you know. Uh, spend the time with, the, with my wife and kids and family. You know, you learn to eat a little healthier too, you know, instead of um, grabbing fast food a couple times a week, you, you learn to, to make food at home and, and um, go that route. Um, kind of share that with my wife and family. My, my wife's been excellent helping me out with that. Um, we, uh, we exercise together in our off time and, and um, and getting our kids kind of focused in that direction as well. So it's, it's, it's a total family change, mm -hmm. so. That's great to hear, great to hear. Um, you mentioned Emily and, um, you know, the, the support at Wilson Health. Um, Emily, I want to talk to you a little bit, a little bit about um, your role um, in the heart care team at Wilson Health. I met Kevin back in November. And we started there in our program. Uh, we get our patients doing some stretching and some weightlifting, and, as well as the whole cardio part to strengthen that heart and to make it better to help prevent a next cardiac event. We also monitor them. We set target heart rate and increase their workloads as they're able to go home. That's great. Um, you know, it, it really, uh, when you experience, you know, a heart episode, um, or you have heart disease or experience a heart attack, um, there's a lot of personal accountability to, you know, the aftercare and, and, and the lifestyle changes. Um, but I think, you know, people um, need to hear kind of the support outside of the family. So um, can you talk a little bit more about the resources available through Wilson Health when it comes to heart care? Yes, with our cardiac rehab program, we offer, um, you know, classes on um, individual or we send our book with the patient mm -hmm. uh, discussing stress management as well as diabetes, becoming smoke-free if you haven't quit smoking, 
Um, of course, diet is always in there uh, and regular exercise. We also have a community outreach with our Mended Hearts program that meets every fourth Monday of the month and talks about specific heart topics that patients would like to hear about, like heart failure, hypertension, uh, cholesterol levels. We've had pharmacists come and speak with us on certain cardiac medications to help the patients understand more of what they're taking. Uh, we also have had dietitian to help them understand their diet and eating habits, um, you know, how to modify. And we also, um, this month, are looking at talking about more again on hypertension and having a cooking demo so that our cardiac patients can realize that eating healthy doesn't always have to taste so bland and there is another season other than salt. Uh, so that is another um, method that we try to get our patients to live a healthier lifestyle. That's great. Um, that's great. And that's offered right here um, yes. at Wilson, correct? Yes, at okay. Wilson Health. Like I said, every fourth Monday of the month and it's usually in one of the conference rooms up front. Okay, great, um, great. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your relationship. Um, you spend a lot of time at Wilson, um, and and you know I think um, I've heard that you know obviously you have a strong support system at home, but you know Emily is one of your biggest cheerleaders when it comes to you know getting you um, as healthy as you can be, not only for yourself but for your family. Um, talk a little bit about you know your relationship. Um, with Emily in the program at Wilson Health. Girls are just mm -hmm. awesome in there. They, they come in, you go in every day, every day or every couple days and um, they check you in, put a monitor on you and um, uh, they go, they'll counsel with you if you have questions on certain things. Um, they'll get you started with your uh, program, whether it's starting out with some stretches or getting on a treadmill or a bicycle. They're, they're all there, they're there to help you, and they're just awesome. They do a great job. It's, it's like an extended family to you. I mean, they're, they're awesome. Emily, talk a little bit about the progress that you've seen uh, with Kevin. I think Kevin is doing great. I think when I first met Kevin, when he came in, I think he was a little nervous, you know, being so young and this being a second cardiac event. It's, uh, I think, very stressful. And when you still have young kids and um, you know, your family, you really start to rethink again. Um, but he has come a long way. He's really opened up and um, his workloads are great. He's doing fabulous. And like I said, coming along very well. Yeah. So Kevin has almost completed his 12 week program with us um, as a monitored patient and we'll be doing our phase three program, which is what we consider a maintenance program where they come in and use us as their fitness facility um, instead of going to another gym where they know they're safe and we monitor their blood pressure and heart rate and oxygen saturation. And if we notice any kind of discrepancy or big changes, then we can uh, talk with the doctor right away. A nice opportunity and great extension for our cardiac patients uh, to come in and still uh, be part of our family and to take care of themselves and take care of their heart. Kevin, is there anything that you would like to leave us with today? Well, I can just tell you this group of girls in here, they're, they're a great bunch. They take care of you, and it's just an extension of family. Um, they're, they're there for you every single time you're there. They're awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your story. Um, our goal is that you know people watching um, can, can take away from this that if they are um, you know, feeling um, like they, there is some concern regarding their heart care, that they do, you know, take the appropriate steps to get it checked. So thank awesome. you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Wake Up With Wilson. Join us next month when we will be talking to medical experts about colon cancer. Did you know one in 20 people will be diagnosed with colon cancer this year? Learn how you can reduce your risk before it's too late.